but I do want to ask you top five intros from any cartoon or animation for you. So, you know, intro music is always good. So I want to know what is your top five intros that you've seen on shows or that you like, man, I like that intro. Oh, wow. Um, top five intro, top five. Um, it doesn't have to be in order. It could be just, just so you know. It doesn't have to I be mean, I, you know, pers- I, I mean, again, yeah. I have a personal attachment to the static intro, of course. Yeah. you know, because it's just showing him and his life. And it's got that. I mean, and back then you didn't have hip hop theme songs. Not at all. Not at all. You know? <laughs> yeah, that was the only one. Um, and I love the, the Clone Wars opening, but that's just because that takes me back to my childhood when you got that. You know, that Star Wars crawl. Yeah, yeah. Um, wow. If there's another three. Hmm. I don't know. I should I should have done some homework. Uh, <laughs> but then it would have been too scripted. I like it. I like it being on the fly. <laughs> um well if you can't think of any other three, that, that two is yeah. good enough. We'll go with those two. Um, all right. So you uh, you are on record saying that you are more of a comic book reader than mm. anything. Um, and I do want to get, so it doesn't have to be like top, like best comic book, but what are some of your, your most prized comic books that you just, that you refer back to, that you'll go back uh, to? That, okay. This one I can answer. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I mean, you, you see, I got my, my DC comics classics back there. Um, one that I always go back to is the original 1939 Batman story because those images are burned into my memory and just embody you know dark pulp action to me back when he had the guns right (laughs) (laughs) um but more um uh recent something like because I have a a long box that is just my greatest hits comics that you know either I will refer to people it's like here you need to read this and the one, the main ones are American Flag, which was this sci-fi, you know, comic in the '80s set in a dystopian, you know, Earth. In I think it's actually it's about seven years from now, where the and it, and the writer and artist Howard Chaikin, like he called so many things that are happening now, right? Like the climate change, you know, he, he, back in 1983, he's like, they, they got a Chicago where the winter goes for six months and can't nobody grow nothing. So there's a food crisis and everybody lives in a, in a mall, but the mall is covered in screens, you know, and the main character is uh, Ruben Flagg, who used to be an actor on a cop show. But they got enough of his character digitally that they said, okay, we don't need you anymore. We're just going to use the digital version to do the rest of the show. You're fired. And so then he went off and became an actual cop. Right. You know, and so I, I love it because it's funny. It's great action. It's a little dirty. So when I was 14, I'm like, oh, I can't believe I'm reading this. <laughs> um, my other ones are... Uh, New Teen Titans, the introduction of Cyborg, Raven, Starfire, that version of Teen Titans, you know, um, which I just love. And I love the fact that it's still, you know, present in culture today. Yeah. You know, Um, let's see. What are my other ones? Dark Knight, you know, um, just because to me, that was what took Batman away from the campy goofy mm-hmm. back to yeah. that original that 1939 right. badass yeah yeah you know um wait, is that five or is that four that was four we got one more um and the other one is um actually the i keep i'm thinking about the which um tr- you know graphic tr- graphic novel trades i hand off to people yeah. uh i give Tied for five, we got Kingdom Come, okay. which I'm hoping somebody will do a version of now that they have the technology right? Um, and that they don't mess it up. Um, <laughs> and um, 
Oh, wait, what was it? Uh... Oh, shoot, I just lost it. I had it. It was um, Kingdom Come. Oh, and Fables. Oh, okay. Which is not a big, hip, cool thing. Nobody's done a movie version of it. Um, but I just, you want to talk about world building. Yeah. I just love that on a concept level where they took these things that we all know, all these fairy tales, and then turned it into this world and these characters, and it was just such a full world. Although I guess, I don't know, maybe maybe there was a lawsuit or something about whether Once Upon a Time was based on fables. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, once, I, I don't... I believe they they I know there was a it was a lot of debate online like that oh, that that's what it was but yeah I don't think I don't know if it was a lawsuit or not but yeah yeah but and and the truth of the matter is people I don't know I, I think it has to do with the internet and people forget that time you know changes things because yeah. when you look on the internet it looks like everything is all there at once yeah. yeah you know but not everybody can see everything at once sometimes people just take in the same stimulus and come up with the same idea. Right, because I was going to say, it's, it, that's not that's not a, a foreign idea to say, hey, let's take this property that is... Well, yeah. well, what well, if fairy tales right. were in the modern world? Yeah. That's, the, that's that concept. Yeah. Anybody could think of that. Yeah. So, you know. You know? I mean, I'm, I'm, I got into a whole thing with some friends of mine about uh, this controversy over the, the, the Oscar-winning short, Two Distant Strangers. And there's this woman who had another short, you know, about the same, again, the same concept. Like, and again, to me, that's like, okay, we all turn on the news and see a black man getting shot every single damn day. And it's like the same thing over and over and over. Yeah. It doesn't take a genius intellect to connect that to the movie Groundhog Day. I was say, that's, that's literally like, oh, man, dude, this is Groundhog Day. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's it's so easy to put those two together. So it's like, right. I, you know, people can have the same thought, you know, it's just like, you know, and I think that when it comes down to it, I think it's just because of success. When people see something successful that they had the same idea, like, oh man, that could that was my idea. And I was like, no, we could have had the same thought, man. Like it's like, that's right. it. <laughs> it's like, I thought of that before I saw them get an Oscar for it. So right. it's mine. <laughs> and it's funny because I literally had this experience back when we were on Mad TV. You know, I had a character, Funky Walker, Dirty Talker. You know, who was who was this this dude from the seventies with a big afro right. talking about sex and funkiness and all that, baby. You know. Right. And we shot the sketch. You know, actually, one of the writers had pitched it to me, and I know you know the year before, yep. and I was like. No, I ain't gonna be no black man walking around shaking my butt. <laughs> and I literally turned it down. Right. But then over the summer, I was like, that would actually be funny. And then I went back to the writer and he's like, wait, what? He didn't even remember the sketch. Right. Like, no, you pitched me this sketch. I and I told you that it was racist. I'm a I disagree now. Right. <laughs> I think it would actually be funny. And so we'd had that a year before. We did the sketch, shot it. But now Mad TV didn't air live. Mm -hmm. We would shoot stuff and it would be like a month or two before it would air. The week after we shot it, Ladies Man aired on SNL. I knew this, I knew, uh, ladies Man. I was just like, what the hell? <laughs> you start checking, who's, who's micing me up? Who's <laughs> <my hand? laughs> and it's one of those things like, okay, black dude with a 70s vibe, talking sexy, it's like, yeah, I don't know him that. And it's funny. It's funny because it's like he literally says, "I'm I'm sexy talking." <laughs> like, right? the ladies, man, he literally says that. So it's like that's the whole premise. That's hilarious. 